If you've drug audio into Ableton Live before and your clips suddenly change length, I wanna explain in this tutorial why that's not a big deal and the one setting that you can turn on or disable to change how that functions. So let's hop over to my Ableton Live set here. I've got a, a drums audio clip that I wanna drag into my Ableton Live set. And let's just uh, zoom out here so we can see the clip. I'll talk about what I'm talking about here. If you change the tempo in your Ableton Live set, then it's very likely that you've seen this happen. So see how my clip is, at least it looks like, changing length, it's getting shorter here, it's getting longer here based on how I change the tempo. Well, this all has to do with one particular setting in Live's preferences, and it all has to do with something called warping. So the first thing I wanna point out is that particular setting. So let's go into preferences, command comma. If you're on a PC, this is control uh, comma. Let's go to the record warp launch tab. Now under the warp fade section here, we wanna to go to auto warp long samples. And I have this turned off. Now, if I remember correctly, the default setting in Ableton Live starting, I think at like live nine, was to have auto warp long samples disabled. Essentially what this means is live treats audio like it's elastic. If you drag an audio clip into Ableton Live, it's gonna do its best guess to guess at the tempo of that audio clip and then make that clip match the current tempo of your live set. This is super helpful when you're working and, and trying to build a track from scratch you can preview uh, samples of audio and drag it into your live set. Again, it's really, really helpful when you're producing, when you're creating music. But when you're trying to build a live set and you want those tempos to stay constant, you want a file that's at 120 BPM to stay at 120 BPM, it's not an incredibly helpful feature. Uh, so primarily for me, when I'm using stems uh, on stage for live performance, I suggest that you leave auto warp long samples disabled. So what this then means is when I drag a audio clip into my live set, if I double click here, you'll see that this audio clip is unwarped. So you can see that warp is disabled on the clip, okay? Again, that's a super beneficial thing because I want this just to play at its original tempo. Let's actually listen to it for a second because I want you to hear what's actually happening, okay? So let's go to my audio clip here and let's just press play and listen just for a second. Okay, so it's just a clip of drums. You can hear it playing. Uh, it's important to note again, it's playing at its original tempo. Now let's zoom out here again and we can take this clip and uh, let's slow this down, right? So you see our, our clip kind of smushes up, it gets shorter, at least we think. But let's go back to our live set. Let's listen to these drums one more time. So I'm gonna press play here. Okay, so when you hear the drums, it's important to know they did not change tempo. Even though I changed tempo in my Ableton Live set, my, my drums did not change tempo. Now it looks like the, the clip got shorter, right? Because we saw kind of as I'm dragging the tempo, see how the, the clip is changing there. But the clip isn't changing, it's just the underlying timeline behind the clip change because I'm changing my tempo. Now my clip is not changing tempo. Why is it not changing tempo? Because it's not warped. If you go back to the beginning, remember we talked about warping, we disabled auto warp long samples. So because my uh, clip is unwarped, uh, auto warp long samples is disabled, that clip is gonna play at its original tempo. So again, even though it looks like it's changing the length of the clip, it's actually not. It's changing the timeline and so the clip is adjusting to follow that timeline. But what if we do want to actually have the clip change tempo with live tempo? How do we do that? So what I wanna do is, and the way to do this is we need to actually warp our audio. So I'm gonna go back here. Uh, this clip is at 81 BPM. And so if you only have one clip in your set, I think this is the easiest, best way to warp audio. Set your tempo to the uh, tempo of your clip. Go down here and hit warp. And when you do this, uh, you could zoom in, you could see your clip, you could double click to add warp markers, do all sorts of different things if you want to. Um, I know that this is gonna play in time because this clip is just pretty straight tempo at 81 BPM. So I'm just gonna leave kind of as is. The other thing I may wanna look at here is my warp mode. Now this is an actual beat, so I could leave this set to beats. Uh, but if I'm working with full song content or, or more complex content, I may want to choose complex. Technically that raises your CPU, but it's such a small incremental thing, I would not stress about it. So if you're doing full songs, choose complex. If you're using um, uh, just beats or drum beats like I'm doing here, leave this set to beats. So now what's really cool about this, let's press play. Okay, so let's jump to the beginning of our file here. All right, so again, we hear our audio clip playing at our original tempo, which is great. Now let's change our tempo. Let's go from 81 to 120. So I'll just type that in here. Now let's listen to it. Right, and you could see our tempo actually changed and it changed all because of this one setting down here, warp. 
okay? So it's important to note, if you want your samples to change uh, tempo to match the tempo of your Ableton Live set when you drag them in, make sure that you warp your clips. Now, by default, let me show you one other thing that we'll wrap up here. By default, if I go back into preferences, record warp launch, um, if you look at uh, this setting right here, loop warp short samples, uh, by default, you could choose how your samples uh, function when they're shorter. I don't know off the top of my head the exact, like what does Ableton define as a short sample? Is it a minute or less? Is it 20 seconds or less? But what you're probably gonna see is when you drag in shorter samples, those automatically will warp and adjust to the correct tempo. Uh, again, longer samples are gonna be determined by what this is set to, auto warp long samples, whether that's on or off. Um, but if you want things to, to warp and it's a longer sample, just drag it into your live set enable warp, you could go through, you could add, add warp markers and, and um, get that on the beat, uh, take it off the beat, kind of whatever you want to do with, with each of those hits. Um, but this is a really helpful utility to uh, help you create music whatever way works best for you. If you want to maintain the original tempo, leave it unwarped. If you want to change tempo and have the sample uh, change with the tempo of your live set, then consider warping it. The other thing you should consider doing is subscribing to the From Studios to Stage YouTube channel. Every single day, 10 a.m. Central, it's nuts, I never sleep. I create a brand new tutorial showing how to use Ableton Live on stage. Uh, showing you tips and tricks like this to help you understand Ableton Live a little better. So if you create an Ableton Live, if you perform on stage with Ableton Live, do me a favor, hit the subscribe icon, enable the bell icon, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.